welcome back, this is Bella Scuba with more Let's Play Xenosaga Episode 1. I am joined, as always, by my trusty squad of Chian Uzuki and everybody else is off somewhere else. When we last left off, we were fully exploring the Elsa. We are almost done with that. <coughs> uh, but first, since it is a new session, it is time to head back into the database. Hooray, the database! There are quite a few things that we need to take care of in here. Uh, we will go to the environmental simulator shortly, uh, but first uh, we need to look at the database. I don't think there's anything new in terms of Gnosis. We have not fought any Gnosis for quite some time. So let's just go straight into the keywords. Uh, I, I assume everybody knows what most of this me means. Uh, we've gone over most of this amplifier. We uh, did not go over amplifier. It's a device used by warships to amplify the Hilbert effect. It also has a secondary function as an omnidirectional broadcaster uh, up to 100 kilometers in radius. That is very, very big, I must say, for a single radio signal or whatever kind of signal they are amplifying. I don't exactly know what the Hilbert effect is yet. They haven't gotten over it. We might later. We might later. Uh, Ten to several hundred tons. So only large vessels or cities have them. All Federation fleet warships built after the year 4766. I forget what TC stands for. Uh, they have them pre-installed as part of their standard equipment. The Boglinde has one, but due to the lack of the complementary 100 series observational units, it suffered tremendous damage during battle, unfortunately. Unfortunately. Italia definitely is new. It's a planetary member of the Galaxy Federation. It is well located in close proximity to the area in which the Boglinde disaster occurred and functions as a relay point for the transfer column to Sinir. Sinir sounds somewhat important. We will see if it actually is. Bormio University, uh, we might have gone over this before. It's a university, it's a good one, and Alan went there. Technological institution, I guess that's kind of important, maybe. Chaos, this one is probably very, very important. Born unknown, age unknown. A slender young boy has perpetually melancholic expression as well as the depth and scope of his conversations give rise to the impression that he hails from a higher plane of existence. Why would you say he's always melancholy? He looks very cheery to me. As he volunteers no information whatsoever about his past other than his name, everything about him, including whether he has even has any memory of his past, is unknown. His relationship with Mash Matthews and the crew appears to go back for s quite some time, and they respect him highly. His translucent blue eyes and silver hair are particularly notable features. What about the Gnosis thing? You gonna go over that game? No, of course not. Uh, condenser, I believe, is new. The in-game references to a device used by Cosmos to store the energy she requires to function. Due to the fact that Cosmos's current setup was for simulated battle, her condenser is also a test version. Uh, the second division on second Milsha is developing a working model of the condenser, I guess, maybe. Counterterrorism, I think we all know what that means now. Uh, when this game came out, it wasn't necessarily that popular of a term. The literal translation is anti-terrorism. A hundred years ago, Ziggy was a me member of the 1875th Special Ops Command Detachment of the Federation Police Bureau, a unit which specialized in counterterrorism. So he worked in counterterrorism. Like I said, we kind of all know what that means now. Uh, due to other events. Curry, one of Xion's culinary specialties. A reaction by an American game fan who saw this scene at a recent game show was, what the hell are they eating? It's curry, man. Curry. I didn't even, honestly, I, I thought curry was more of a Chinese thing than a Japanese thing, but what do I know? Uh, more of a mainland thing. Cyborg is new as well. It's a living organism which possesses artificial or organs, pretty much a human that then just straps mechanical parts onto himself. An obsolete technology, once popular in the age before nano and realian technologies emerged. So in other words, there are nano machines, and then there, of course there are realians, so why be a cyborg anymore? Uh, this is all 
repeats. Dragon Skull is new. We do have a lot to go over today. As you can see, we have 129 total entries, and I haven't gone over 100, so we got a few things to go over. Dragon Skull is a multi-purpose railgun capable of firing various types of ammunition. Cosmos used this gun to fire a signal transmitter. So that's what she pulled out, that huge awesome thing that she used just to fire a homing beacon or whatever that was. Uh, that's called a Dragon Skull. It's to, uh, she fired a signal transmitter to notify Vector Headquarters of the Gnosis' transfer coordinates uh, to find out where they went. D Triple S Double Slot Sensory System. Why this wasn't given to us before, I don't know. A device developed by Vector Industries used to detect Gnosis in the imaginary realm. Once again, I don't like that term, the imaginary realm. Uh, I understand it, I guess, from a quantum standpoint, but still. Still, it consists of a double slit camera lens mounted on the sensory area of an eggs or other fighter craft. The military eggs have them mounted on the chest while the vector models have them on the waist. I don't know why that's necessarily important, but I guess it is. The concept behind this device is similar to that of the double slit light interference experiment often used in quantum physics. Now, once again, I don't know enough about quantum physics to tell you what the double slit light interference experiment is what I would imagine is that they have two different positions or possibly two different angles of the the, the light to see how particles interact with it but once again I, I'm no quantum physicist I'm working on it though I actually am l l looking into that we'll see if I can sort that out as we go along but right now I don't have very much information Elsa, pretty damn big, pretty damn heavy. It's a low Hengren class high velocity interstellar cruiser. It is not a firefly, unfortunately. Formerly a luxury vessel owned by a criminal organization, it was converted into a cargo ship by Captain Matthews and used as part of the Kukai Foundation's fleet. Though not apparent from the outside, Matthews made a Quite a few modifications, such as the installation of hidden compartments to stow unlicensed weapons. He also upgraded the propulsion system to the latest Logic Drive Logic Propulsion device, making it the fastest ship in the galaxy, according to Tony. The name Elsa comes from the heroine of Wagner's opera Lohengrin, which was uh, in 1850. Yeah, they're big on Wagner in this game. Once again, one thing that I don't know is, is opera. Uh, if I were to look into it, it would probably be Wagner because of this game. And I really should before I, I, I get too much further into the game. Especially the second and third game, I should really start looking into to Wagner, at least the operas. All of this we have seen before. Uh, yeah, we've seen a lot of these. I'm surprised how many of these we have seen. Federation Police is new, short for Galaxy Federation Police Force. Their function and organizational structure is basically the same as the police force in our time, but following the transition of human habitation to outer space, a specialized unit was created. The Special Operations Command Detachment, of which Ziggy was a member in the past, specialized in anti-terrorist oper operations as well as the protection and rescue of VIP. So, uh, there are, I guess you could say, SWAT teams. I would, I would assume Special Operations Command would be similar to, to SWAT uh, in our time. Well, at least in America, I don't know what they call it in other places. Special Weapon and Tactics. Fifth Jerusalem, the capital planet of the Galaxy Federation and seat of the Central Legislative, Judicial, and Administrative Agencies. The headquarters of the SOCE is also located here. Those were the Special Operations people. I forgot what CNE stand for all, stood for already, and that was like 10 seconds ago. Its name originated from the fact that it was the fifth planetary capital of the Galaxy Federation. So what happened to one through four? That's always my question, and they probably aren't going to be answering it. Uh, none of that is new. Hammer is new. Uh, he's only 27 years old. He is fully human, unfortunately. Uh, he's the navigator on the Elsa. 
He may not look it, but he was once revered as a brilliant hacker in his teens. However, he got way over his head when he hacked into a criminal organization's database, and he has been on the run since then. He was rescued by Matthews, and the two have worked together ever since. He knows Tony the pilot since childhood. Although he may be a clown, he is an excellent navigator and engineer. He looks like he is the brains of the organization a lot of the time. Hilbert Effect! I don't believe we have gone over this. No, we, we did. We did go over this because I remember the realm of plank scales coming up. So, what I said before, yes, that I still don't really know what the Hilbert effect is, and I don't think that I'll ever really go over it. Interconnection? Yes, we have gone over this. I'm surprised how much we have gone over. Joachim Mizrahi, that's new. Uh, he's 52, well, he was 52 when he died, which was 14 years ago, so he was born 66 years earlier than this game takes place. He's an advocate of the 100 series observational unit and essentially Momo's father. A scientist renowned for his genius, he died in 4753. I can do the math, thank you, game. The year the Milshin conflict began. The Federation benefited greatly from his contributions, as his numerous research findings played a large part in the Federation's growth. Uh, yeah, he was also Yuli Mizrahi's former husband. They don't give us much information about uh, Yoki Mizrahi. He is a very important character for them not to, not to bring him up. He died in the Milshin conflict. Everybody's looking at his research. Tell me more about this guy. No, no. Yuli Mizrahi. Uh, 22 years younger than Joachim. I just wanted to point that out. She's 44 now. He would have been 66 was he alive now. Just throwing that out there. One of the top members of the Galaxy Federation Subcommittee on Close Encounters, SOCE. So I was wrong. It is not Special Ops that is SOCE. This is the Jedi Council. And widow of the late Joachim Mizrahi. In 4754, her alarm over the increase in Gnosis phenomena prompted her to form the SOCE. Uh, close Encounters of any kind, I guess. She is the current legal guardian of Momo, one of the 100 series observational units, which she developed in conjunction with her late husband, Joachim. Her maiden name is Niwa Shiro. Once again, I'm not sure if the names are supposed to mean anything to me, because they don't. Uh, Keltia, or Keltia, might be Keltia. A planetary member of the Galaxy Federation and the location of the Seraphim Sisters concert. I think it was Keltia. Uh, Kukai Foundation. A unique, wouldn't it be an unique? Either way, a unique feder foundation whose membership extends to both Matthews and his crew. Its headquarters is located on a free orbiting space colony. We'll learn more about the foundation later. Trust me. Uh, Lieutenant Commander Vander Cam. A lieutenant commander in the UTIC organization, rumor has it that he was on board the Wogalinde to secure the Zohar. Th th this was the guy with the purple X on his face. Whether he was the same officer who reprimanded Xion is as of yet unknown, but I am telling you, yes, yes, that, that is who they are referring to. <laughs> I mean, they put him right next to the old one right here, where it's just the Lieutenant Commander. I think we can just make that assumption right now. Life Pod, a life preservation craft used in emergencies. The Wilkland Day was equipped with many of these life pods, but by the time Xion and Alan had escaped, there was just the one left. Maximum occupancy is limited to two, and the life support system can run 500 hours. However, judging from the levels of oxygen remaining, it seems that Xion's pod had already had problems on her before takeoff. That's how they fill in that loophole. <laughs> the Life Recycling Act. Uh, this is also relatively important, especially if you're a fan of Ziggy. Introduced as a bill in 4590, it passed with unusual speed and was voted into law in the following year, 4591. In the age when cyborg technology was at its peak, human resources were dwindling and this law was intended for effective utilization of these resources. In other words, people were becoming more machine than man. However, with time, the interpretation of the law expanded to condone human cloning, genetic and neural engineering, and other procedures formerly considered to be off-limits. So, pretty much genetic engineering, neural engineering, cloning, this is all okay, but cyborgs, screw that. 
I don't necessarily understand the law. This it's kind of controversial, I would assume. Uh, various corporate interests are suspected to be behind this development. So yes, special interests. I would assume that it was controversial. This law remained in effect for 160 years, though, until it was revoked in 4754. Uh, Jeez, I don't even. So I, I don't even remember what year it is now. So it's hard for me to say like how long ago that was. But they don't make cyborgs anymore. Anyway, so there is no need for it. Uh, all this we have seen. Margulis is new. So wait, okay, we're in 4767 or 4768. Probably 4767. Uh, that's probably the current year. One of the key figures of the UTIC organization and commander of the Pleroma, one of their primary bases. He's 44, same age as uh, Yuli Misrahi. He is intricately connected to both the incident which occurred 40, 14 years ago and the Militian conflict, which to this point are one and the same to us. The incident that occurred 14 years ago and the Militian conflict are the same thing, as far as we know. Apparently they're trying to hint that they're a little different, but we don't know what they're talking about. He appears to be a former soldier, judging from his strong physique and the sword scar running across his cheek. A master swordsman with a cold, merciless personality. Wonder how he got that scar. <clears throat> Matthews! 40? He's only 40? Damn. He's captain of Elsa, of course. He's a chronic spender. He is constantly in debt. In particular, he owes a large sum to the Kukai Foundation, of which he is a member of, and his beautiful ship was made into collateral. So, he, he had to like mortgage it, reverse mortgage it, whatever you call it. Uh, he, he, he had to put it up as collateral for a loan. After retiring, he worked as a junk trader collecting and selling debris from around the universe. Uh, didn't really say what he was, his former job was, but he retired from it, and so now he now he does this. Uh, but in recent years, he works mainly for the Kukai Foundation. He met Chaos several years before the beginning of this episode, and they have been traveling together since. So once again, they're breaking the fourth wall there. Uh, they met before the game started. Thank you. I could have figured that out on my own. Mizrahi Cerebral Sciences Research Center. This is what UTIC used to be called. The research institute where Joachim Mizrahi worked as a chief scientist. The chief scientist. Before the UTIC organization was established. is a unique institute which combines neuroscience with phenomenology. Really? Ph phenomena? Something like a phenomena? And aside from the fact that it was sponsored by Vector Industries, there is little known about it. So, they're kind of hinting that Vector and Utix have, have some similar origins. Well, not similar origins, but Vector has something to do with Utix origins here. Momo, definitely new. Short for Multiple Obs Observative Mimetic Organicus. I swear, her name's, her name's an acronym. <laughs> how crazy is that? Activation date unknown, so nobody knows how old she is. She used a 100 series prototype reality and designed to observe and contact the Gnosis, beings that can only be detected by a special sense. She was created by Yoki Mizrahi and she resembles his deceased daughter, Sakura Mizrahi. Her outward appearance is that of a 12 year old. She's 12, guys. Why are we always looking up her skirt then? Don't think I haven't noticed you guys looking up her skirt. She looks like Sakura, apparently. Sakura. She does have the pink hair. There's too many Sakuras for me to reference. We'll just go with the most popular one. Uh, Nexus 6. It's, yeah, it's the, the, the number that Ziggy gave to his stepson. That's kind of important. Stepson, not regular son. Uh, his phrase, I wanted to get you a real run, reveals how... Real purebred dogs were extremely rare in that age, and Ziggy, a policeman, could not possibly afford one. Hence, cheaper artificial dogs were popularized as substitutes. Kind of look like a corgi to me. Uh, Nexus is the name of the company that manufactures these artificial dogs, and their lifespan exceeds well beyond four years, which is not very long for a dog. Usually, I mean, they make it. They they usually make it to double digits. Yeah. Pelligree! That was, uh, the... I guess you could say Margulis is, like, right-hand girl. Sure. She's a female commander. She's 36. Uh, she, she's in UTIC. Yeah, Margulis is aide on Pleroma. That's how they're going to refer to her. And there's not much information after that. 